Well, I think it will choose to Firkin Fulcher Rue Villiak, Eko Oris and Uktron, Agus Akohire, an ear special to Donald Rush to Firkin Fulcher Rue to Gonal, Agus Ohisaram, Gara, Gwild Clan Lat, Okoit Tovok, Dup Ervalak and Pisa Kuisa Grunak, Octa Shekiluruk, because my time with Takiko Jerry Proshish, a Proshish Dacker, a Prote Osredic or Hossishe, a Inoris Nutron or Valak, a Fulimulta, Toshe Ryukno, Agus Irene, a Jarve, a Inoris Nutron. May I say how welcome you all are to Oris Nutron and to say that uh, I'm so pleased that Donal, who is the most important person here, but that his family have been able to join him, uh, and also uh, all of those who were of assistance to him professionally. I am glad you are here, and I acknowledge your presence, Mr. Carlin and family, and also uh, all of those who were supportive, uh, those who believed in the a very necessary campaign uh, for the redress of what was wrong. Enya gachtan a fi karak tofirkin fulcher of Horus and Uktron. May I, I just say that, uh, as far as I'm concerned, and there's a very large file which I think Donald has seen inside, and in it I will I ha will place a copy of a letter that which will conclude and end conclude that file. And the letter I have placed in the file, I will read to you now. I will be presenting uh, Donald his own copy, so that he can take it away as an affirmation that he has been to the President of Ireland uh, to affirm uh, my, my President's welcome for the fact that government has concluded the negotiations with his legal team. There's a report which established that what was he was made to suffer was not in accordance to law, and also as well as that <coughs> that this now, however late after decades, the file is closed. And I wish him going across and he has my best wishes for the future. The letter I will give the letter I have put in the the letter I will sign for the file, the letter I will present to Dolan reads as follows thirtieth of March or as an Uktron thirtieth of March twenty twenty three. Dear Donal, as President of Ireland and Supreme Commander of the Defence Forces, I was pleased when in twenty twenty the government authorised a review into your case and the circumstances of your forced retirement in nineteen sixty nine. I am also aware that this followed a resolution from Shannon in 2010 calling for such review. For some time, and particularly since my election as President of Ireland, I have sought to bring light to your concerns surrounding your compulsory retirement in the interests of the service under signature of the then President, a decision that was won without an appeal process. I have been seeking answers to the many questions of fair procedure that have arisen following the use of an instrument under Section 47.2 of the Defence Act 1954 by my predecessor, President de Valera, on the advice of the then government. All of that this has taken a very long time, and for you most of all, I am aware that it has been one of the most painful and ever more tedious recollection of a wrong suffered decades ago but with enduring consequences. I am aware of and welcome the findings of the review, <coughs> Mr Nile Byrne, Senior Counsel, that the decision on your compulsory retirement in 1969 was fundamentally flawed and not in accordance with law. The section referred to is the, in the 1954 Act for your compulsory retirement was amended in 1988. I welcome, as President of Ireland, the apology for the Minister for Defence on behalf of the Government, which followed the publication of the review 7th of December 2022, <coughs> for the distress and upset that you have suffered over the years. The review of Mr Nile Byrne, Senior Counsel, concluded that in deciding to advise President de Valera on your retirement, 
without affording you fair procedure, that this process was seriously and fatally compromised. Indeed, in referencing the provision to the right to one's good name in Article 43.2 of Bonrock Nahern, the reviewer concluded that, and I quote, it is difficult to envisage how greater damage could be caused to the good name of an officer of the defence forces than his compulsory retirement because no trust or confidence could be reposed in him and that to retain him in the army would hazard military security and the safety of the state. I am aware of the tremendous personal toll that this decision has had on your life and of the hurt that it has caused to you and to your family. I believe your motivation of joining the Defence Forces as a young man was based on a love of your country and a commitment to a life of service. It is my sincere hope that the findings of the review, its acceptance by government and subsequent apology will bring some peace to you personally and to your family support us. May I take the opportunity to commend the unwavering commitment of your family and supporters, Therese Liam Loeb, including your late mother, Christina, and their dedication to restoring your good name. In recognition of the failings that surround the circumstances of your retirement, I welcome the opportunity to host you and your family at the home of the President, Horace and Uchtaron, associated as Oris and Uchtaron was with the great wrong you suffered. But now today you are welcomed, and that wrong and the long process of your vindication is acknowledged and concluded at a meeting that I hope gives some healing. Gonal Bergach Banach Don Taki, Mission, the Audi Genuktron Meher. My daughter would say, Wow, <laughs> belt and braces, the blood and bandage, cork for the cup. Should I? A waha agasavoro shin a hern. Queen Fortius Fahagiv, Don Kalura Ahasuk. So, now I made a kind of a vow to myself that I'd avoid that thing called political, but we're all pals here, so it's safe to say that I can share the army joke with you that military justice is to justice what military music is to music. And I happen to like Sousa and Alta Camaraden and the rest of it, but you can think on that one. <laughs> now, Mara Dern and Shanlockel, being grossed as an arch in the main Nora. I was a snarlock, got hogs a heart lack head bleeding, and fiala down down like arms a chartu. Ah, being blast shar vern fearna, I was stand vern a darn old greenish for year. Malam and talk there on and to some Michal de O'Higgin, a hug a quiddle doing and shot enough. I was in a yield, my dear chiffin, my cause a heart con keen, hard bleeding, I was a queer con cree of fiera. Tom Talling. Mar here go will can I see Don Scott Marsha St. Ours Starul Sha. Eshin Uchtra on the Filichta, the Fjalsunichta, and Starol Lichta, Ags and Tukhtra on the Willig Lor Karam the Fena, Ags Karta Dana Don Cock, Ags and Down Lilig Darno. Tashlocht Mugwell, Ags Nagwell Gori Galer, how is of us? Buich dar Uchtra on our Nosuk, Ags of Van Kela, Sabina. Gamarashid and Kaid. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, I'm over the moon or delighted, as I say, to have lived so long as to have finally succeeded in my pursuit of justice. The year before I joined the army, the kids here won't remember this stuff, but it's deja vu for you, the world stood still and held its breath in what was called the Cuban Missile Crisis. Now, these were exciting and heady times for a young fellow like myself, but they were also terrifying because the whole world was placed on the brink of nuclear disaster by militarism. Later, while I was in the military college, and some people here present will remember that occasion, our senior class was chosen the, with the honour to do the guard for John F. Kennedy, the president of America's funeral in Washington, D.C. This was a historic first. Armed soldiers from a foreign country on United States soil. Soil, thank you, pardon. Well, we juniors, we got the pleasure of polishing up their gear the night before they flew out. And they brought back the first transistor radios we had ever seen. <laughs> so that was exciting times, rock and roll for the troops. 
I was proud to accept my commission as a second lieutenant from the president in 1965 after an arduous and adventurous two years in the cadet college. From there, I took up my first posting in Athlone. But a few years later, with no warning, my active military trajectory was rudely interrupted when I was forcefully retired in, as the president remarked, the interests of the service, if you don't mind. And on top of that, those who did it wrote profession deleted officially on my passport of the time, which of course caused me terrible problems when I went into exile, crossing borders uh, with great difficulty, and I was held over many times, overnight sometimes. I was so frustrated at what happened, I went into the classic psychological condition of denial, anger, depression, resignation, acceptance, and in the end, I was forced to just face up to, like many before me, I was going to be in exile. Now, the most dangerous file, as we talked about file the president was referring to, is an empty file for these securocrats. Blots on one's record may accuse, but they also protect. In turbulent times, decent people have no use and are therefore of little value. If you would with me fast forward to my life as a school bus driver in Balancholic. Well, I'm lying there in bed getting ready for the early run and I wake up to the radio saying, I'm a terrorist, I'm a traitor to my country, a threat and disgrace to the state and my family, and my sister Aidy's presidential campaign was in danger because of her relationship with me. I'm just shocked. My past came back to haunt me. I was, as the kids say nowadays, in a headspin. I was sick to my stomach. My boss told me to take three days off. Parents were phoning up saying, what were you doing having a terrorist driving our children? Which I can understand. And once again, what did I do? I ran for cover. Sadly, the <coughs> events of 1969 were also given to the media in order to damage Aidy's chances in that 1997 election a full 30 years after this shameful event happened to me. This sudden sneak attack did for me, I'll be truthful. I had a nervous breakdown and I had to seek help for my PTSD. Without psychological assistance, I would not have retained my ability to fight for justice. I was actually suicidal in truth, exhausted but not unmotivated. The decency in depth that was the essence of my family was destroyed by my disgrace once again, and that caused me great pain. So I'm so delighted to have my, <coughs> excuse me, my family with me today. Now, as we all know, it's a sad fact that in any individual's life, there will come very few irreplaceable people. Kamala Paddy Walsh, is one of those in my life. At the height of this frenzy, Paddy phoned me and he said, now Donald, it's now or never. Quit running, stand and fight for your rights. And he promised to support me. And for the past quarter of a century, he's been a star comrade. Bart the Ray the Beaver. Also, there's the great Don Mullen, the journalist who wrote a thorough investigative book on my case called The Speaking Truth to Power, which was very well received. Garmaga Don and your family. <laughs> if I may take up a little bit more of your time, there's a few other irreplaceable comrades, one being the great lawyer Eamon Carl the mighty senior counsel of Gerard Humphreys and their wonderful dedicated team who marched me through the High Courts, the Supreme Court and countless reviews until we finally attained justice just recently before Christmas. Of course, I would also like to uh, acknowledge uh, Mr. Simon Coveney's participation that the President referred to and the great uh, Neil Burns' successful review of our senior counsel. Now, I'm th thrilled that my daughter, Sinead, and granddaughters, of Michaela and Marley, are here. <laughs> I want to apologize to Sinead that I have missed the Rose of Chile because of this thing. I wasn't able to appear because I was afraid of the media. 
and I ran, and I'm sorry, but we're together again. Now, my son, Dara. <laughs> my son, Dara, due to technical difficulties, couldn't make it. For Yara, it's old of our ska Kayla a warn the Dini. And without your support, all of you, I wouldn't be here today. That's my reality. Let me say finally, what a wonderful feeling it is to share this occasion with you all and a final meal of buikas to our president and Sabina, his good wife, who allowed us into their home and enabled this to happen. Garmagov. It is such a joy and an honour for the Roach family, all of our relatives and friends. Many have travelled from far and wide, from North America, all over Ireland, to be here for this very special occasion. Gaurav Mila Mila Mahagut Oogthron, our heartfelt gratitude for your compassion, for your kindness, for your integrity, for your soulfulness, and in helping us to restore our brother Donald's good name and his character, which has now been vindicated before our nation and before the world. Because Donald never dared to believe, he never dared to dream, and he never dared to hope that this day could come. But others did the hoping, the dreaming, and the believing for him. And his family therefore wished to particularly add to Donald's words of gratitude to Eamon Carroll, to Jared Humphreys. This legal team, valiant, courageous, fearless, really helped to bring this to fruition. And of course, again, to name the magnificent retired commandant, Paddy Walsh, and the role that Paddy has played, and his darling wife, Carmel, who gave Donald refuge so many times when he was on the run. And also, I have to mention too, Donald, Don Mullen. Uh, Don, your book, you know, the research that you did, because at that stage the case was dead in the water, and through your investigative journalism, through your research and your nailing, you know, the history of the case, and um, that had such a vital role to play to what has brought us here today, and your book, Speaking Truth to Power. But in standing here in Oris and Uthron, when we know that actually the, we had reached a cul-de-sac legally in the case, there was no place left to turn. The lads had done their utmost and Stonewall obstacle challenge all the way. And all of a sudden, the, a, a little miracle happened really. We had this hand of hope, this lifeline was extended from the Auras, from our Uthron, down to us in Cork, to the legal team, and that ignited the fire in the belly once more that has made this happen today. So we stand here together with our brother Donal, surrounded by those who love him and who believed in his innocence, his family and friends. And yes, this is an emotional time, and Donal, I'm glad you shed the old few tears, because he hasn't cried at all, because somehow he has been in a state of almost paralysis or numbness, and uh, this really is the beginning of a whole new life for you, Donal. And I just hope that on this glorious day, as the sunshine streams into this beautiful state room, that our dear parents, Christina Murphy from Liscarroll and our father, Sean Roach from Donnerail, that they are smiling down from heaven, sharing in your glorious day with their dear son, their firstborn, their white-haired boy, their golden boy, as he was known, their firstborn son, Donal, an honourable man, a true survivor and a very noble heart. Gaurav Mila Boikas. Could I just say before we go for refreshments that the Taoiseach of the day meets the President under Article 28 of the Constitution to inform him of matters national and international. This case has been discussed over the last 11 years 
by three Taoiseach. And I would like to pay tribute to those members of my own staff who have stayed in liaison with the, the, the legal t a team that was working for Donald, and all those in my own office who helped me prepare for those Article 28 meetings. And all I have to say, when I was making the list, which never lasted less than two hours and 20 minutes <laughs> they, they, for the Article 28 meetings, up at the top always was, the De Roche case. <laughs> and it can tell you that uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was my privilege. Uh, my, I've seen my first cousin from Liz Carroll is here yes. as well, but Don Olocoche. It was my privilege to have the opportunity uh, of being president of Ireland, Octoron Heron, and uh, to have, uh, to what I admired were all those, Donal, who stood with you. You were very, very good. And what is more, I think, as well, I have said that I have discussed this with three Taoiseach regularly. Usually, the, the, I made a Taoiseach every two or three months. But the fact uh, uh, of the matter was there was endurance involved. And all I wish you now is, I, I think that the those who professionally helped you uh, deserve, are, they are, can be so proud, those who made the independent evaluations can be so as well. And as I said, I have thanked those in my own staff as well, who know who there, who have helped me in preparing for, for all of this. But all I want you all of now, let us all be with you in wishing you every health and happiness for the future. And may you enjoy all the relationships that you have postponed in any way, and all the pleasure and the fruit and the joys. And this is what is so important about it, as I said. This instrument, under those regulations, was only used once. So you're in a very special way, but you are one <laughs> splendid survivor of that process. So bear back that. that. <laughs>